how early war north is strangling the life out of Nigeria through intimidation, fear, and terror. The disruptive power of the House of Alani Cabal is a structural reality and will only get worse, no matter where the president of Nigeria comes from. It is a sevenfold yoke which we must break for the sake of our children. 1. The Political Yoke Globally, out of the 16 federal republics in the world, Nigeria is the only federation where land mass is used as primary criteria for creating feed rating units. No southern leader, civilian or military, has ever had the guts to create any feed rating unit, all the feed rating units have been created by northern military adventurers. 20 feed rating units were created from only one region, north, while 17 feed rating units were created from three regions, east, west, and midwest. Competent leaders are easily filtered off by the rigged political structure. At every election, the evil and corrupt northern cabal needs only a few southern collaborators to impose any presidential candidate upon the two foremost political parties, only for the electorate to formalize one of the candidates with votes. That's why Nigeria has been having such mediocre leaders as president, in a country awash with extremely capable presidential materials. This also explains why since 1960 no southerner has ever led Nigeria except by accident. The first coming of all three southern leaders are Gyi Iransi in 1966, Obasanjo in 1976, and Good Luck Jonathan in 2010, followed the death of northern incumbents. The fourth and only other southern leader was Ernest Shonekarn and his coming followed the forced, stepping aside, of a northern head of state in 1993. He lasted for three months after which he was toppled and replaced by another northern military head of state. For 2019 the presidential contest is being set for Atika vs Buari two Fulani representatives of the cabal. To the economic yoke. Nigeria is the only oil producing country where oil wells are allocated to individuals. The House of Fulani cabal allocated over 80% of the oil blocks either to the northerners or to their southern fronts slash allies. The names of these oil block allottees are in the public domain. 3. The religious yoke. No other faith is mentioned in the Nigerian constitution, except Islam. For instance, in the 1999 constitution, Christ, Christians, and Christianity are not mentioned even once, whereas Islamic signposts are strewn all over the constitution, Sharia is mentioned 73 times, Grand Qadi 54 times, Islam 28 times, Muslims 10 times, etc. That constitution was written solely by one Muslim Fulani jihadist named Professor Awalu Yardyudu, special advisor to Abacha on constitutional matters. While the 1979 constitution emphasized Nigeria's secularity, the 1999 constitution of Yardyudu is a de facto Islamic constitution, and the cabal ensured that Yadudu was there to fight that position at 2014 National Political Conference. Subsequently, during Obasanjo's government, the same northern cabal formally adopted Islam as the state religion in the core northern states. Obasanjo refused to even discuss the issue, except to state that it would fizzle out. He knew fully well that it would not fizzle out but was afraid of confronting the cabal. For the cultural yoke. The Sultanate forms a major pillar of the House of Fulani cabal. As permanent president general of the Nigerian Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, NSIA, the Sultan is the permanent leader of all Muslims in Nigeria, whether they are northerners or southerners. As the permanent chairman of National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, NCTRN, the Sultan is the permanent leader of all traditional rulers in all 36 states of Nigeria and Abuja. By the way, the current Sultan was the Brigadier General commanding 241 Reki Battalion Kaduna. Many public policies are determined only with the tacit approval of the Sultanate of Sokoto and the Emirates. For instance, when the gender bill was introduced in the National Assembly, the Sultan killed the bill simply by criticizing it publicly. Even Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the world's most revered monarch, would never criticize Parliament publicly because that would be an abuse of royal privilege. 5. The Administrative Yoke Nigeria is the only African country that built a new capital from scratch, using resources from the oppressed, deprived, and degraded Niger Delta slash Southeast. The cabal claimed that the location of Lagos by the ocean was a security risk, but this was just an excuse to northernize national public service. A careful look at the map of Africa shows that only two nations have central capitals. The most common location for African capitals is at the coast. London, United Kingdom, is situated at the edge of England on the River Thames. 
Washington, D.C., USA, is located along the Potomac River on the east coast of USA. Paris, France, is located at the edge of France in the north bending arc of the River Seine. When Lagos was capital the governors of Lagos state were from east, west, and north. Since the capital moved to Abuja, no Nigerian leader has ever had the guts to appoint a southerner as substantive FCT minister. The FCT minister must be a northerner, preferably a Muslim, the current FCT minister was appointed while he was executive secretary of the Hajj Commission. 6. The Diplomatic Yoke any Christian leader who questions Nigeria's membership of the two main international Sharia-driven bodies, OIC and DA, faces the wrath of the House of Alani Cabal. So far, only CMDR Ebatuokiwe has ever had the guts to seriously question Nigeria's involvement in these Islamic bodies and as a result, Okiwe was summarily dismissed from office. 7. The Military-Slash-Security Yoke Nigeria is the only federation in the world where all major security agencies are headed by only one section of the federation and only members of one faith. Army, Northern Muslim. National Security Advisor, Northern Muslim. Minister of Defense, Northern Muslim. Minister of Internal Affairs, Northern Muslim. Air Force, Northern Muslim. Police, Northern Muslim. Economic Financial Crimes Commission, Northern Muslim. National Civil Defense Corps. Northern Muslim. Department of State Security, Northern Muslim. Immigration, Northern Muslim. Prisons Service, Northern Muslim. Federal Road Safety Corps, Northern Muslim. Nigerian Customs Service, Northern Muslim. Chief of Defense Intelligence, Northern Muslim. Director of Military Intelligence, Northern Muslim. Fire Service, Northern Muslim. National Emergency Management Agency, Northern Muslim. Nigerian Ports Authority Northern Muslim. No Southerner has been made Substantive Controller General of Customs in 30 years. Even with all these their wickedness and annoying provocations, does not necessary means they are good Muslim Brotherhood. Let's look at it this way, in the early 80s when the entire Arab world wanted to join the African continent, it took only the House of Alani of Nigeria through their leader Alharji Shoaway Shargari, the so-called Muslim Brotherhood to reject their request and denied them the opportunity to join the continent Africa. Even when all the other African countries have given them the approval. Now you know. Ano Basanjo, even with all his braggadocio, Olusegun Obasanjo dared not break the jinx in all these years as Nigeria's president. Again no southerner has ever been appointed as the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission since the day it was established in 2003. Finally, the only southerner that was ever appointed national security advisor was killed after he was unceremoniously removed from office by good luck Jonathan after the cabal blackmailed and arm twisted him and told him that if he wanted peace he must appoint a northerner back to that post. The above multifaceted enslavement to the House of Alani cabal is not an accident. Read the book by Harold Wilson which clearly states how and why the British laid the foundation for the House of Alani hegemony in Nigeria. The principle guiding the cabal was clearly set forth by the cabal's patron saint, Sir Amadou Bello who said to the media, the new nation called Nigeria should be an estate of our great-grandfather Othman Dan Fodio. We must ruthlessly prevent a change of power. We use the minorities in the north as willing tools and the south as a conquered territory and never allow them to rule over us and never allow them to have control over their own future. The Parrot Newspaper, October 12, 1960 Freedom from the cabal is not about North versus South. In fact, the greatest victims of the Northern cabal are the Northern masses themselves. The struggle entails Northern cabal versus all of the lovers of freedom. Nigeria is structurally unworkable and must be broken. The House of Alani cabal may try to resist this with their blood, but there is no other way out of the enslavement for us and our children. We cannot continue suffering and smiling in this unworkable zoo called Nigeria. The words of Harriet Tubman are relevant here. She said, I freed a thousand slaves, I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. The author of this brilliant intervention has given us plenty of food for thought. He argued the matter in a detailed, succinct and concise manner and he stated the case very well. Though there were one or two omissions, his research is outstanding and his analysis is factual, insightful, and incisive. The truth is that he has said it all. Sadly many in Nigeria do not know that they are slaves to the cabal because they cannot feel the yoke or see their chains. Yet slaves they are and it is time that we opened their eyes, broke their yokes, cut their chains and freed each and every one of them.
That is precisely why yours truly, and millions of others, insist on dividing her so everyone should go on her separate ways. May the Heavenly Father deliver us. He's a... Thank you.